Okay, more trig, and now we are on day four of trig. So this is the old trig. This is the unknown triangles, uh, side lengths, angles, that sort of thing. First, we start with Pythagorean theory. Remember, if you're looking for uh, the hypotenuse, what you do is you take the other two sides and you square them and add them together. If you're looking for not the hypotenuse, you subtract. Okay, so there's c squared equals a squared plus b squared, but I don't like to think of that. I just think of this. So if I have this and I have three and I have two and I don't know what that is, what you're going to do is question mark squared is equal to 3 squared minus 2 squared. So whenever it's not the hypotenuse, you subtract. If I had something like this and I had 7 and I had 11, and I don't know what that is, question mark squared or hypotenuse squared is 7 squared plus 11 squared. Now, it doesn't matter which order this is in, okay? This does matter because you're going to have the bigger side subtract the smaller side. And then to find out what the question mark is, you take the square root of each of these, of, of well, not of each of them, one of them at, at a time, and that gets you your answer for that. So that's Pythagorean theorem. So Katoa, uh, so you know, uh, if you remember that video from class, that's uh, getting tricky with it. So Katoa, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. The key is labeling your triangle. It really is. Uh, so if I have this, I don't know how that happened, but if I have this guy here as my triangle, and I want to figure out some missing information, and this is my right angle here. I just drew it on a different angle because we're not, we don't do that that much, but that's my right angle. This is 9.3. If I'm going to find a side, and this is 21 degrees, and I don't know what this is, okay, so I'll call this X, unknown X. Key, key is labeling what's opposite, what's adjacent, and what is hypotenuse. Now, this is always hypotenuse. Across from the right angle is always hypotenuse. Now, you got to figure out what angle you're working at. So I'm working at 21 degrees here. If this is the angle that I'm concerned with, then this is opposite of the angle, and this is adjacent. So... In this case, you're always going to right angle. If you have a right angle, you can use Sokotoa. If not, you can't. Uh, and you look at this here and you say, I am dealing with opposite and I have hypotenuse. Which one is opposite and hypotenuse? It's this one. So that means it's sine of my, my angle, 21 degrees, is opposite, which is 9.3 over hypotenuse, which is X. Now, you're either going to have your unknown on the bottom of a fraction if you're looking for a side or on the top. So there's this type of question. There's also this type of question where you have something like this. And then there's the other question where I don't know the angle and I have a bunch of stuff here and I got to figure out the angle. So question number, this one's probably the easiest. So I'll go to the second one first. This one here, I have to isolate for X. I need X by itself and on top of a fraction. It's on top, but it's not by itself. So what I do is I bring this up here and I end up with 3.1 times sine 60. Just be careful that you don't do sine of 60 times 3.1. Like you don't find this angle for some weird reason. Okay. Make sure that, that you don't. So 60 times 3.1 is 186. Okay. So you don't want to find the sine of 186. Okay. Whatever your calculator does, make sure you don't do that. So usually 3.1 times 60 sine equals is how you're going to find that out. If I don't know this, the unknown is on the bottom. What you're going to have to do is swap these two out. So you bring this up, you bring that down. You want X by itself and, and on top. So you bring it across here to get it on top, but it's not by itself. So you bring sine 21 down here. So now I have 9.3 divided by sine 21, and then usually equals. Again, be careful with your calculator. That's how I would probably do it. 9.3 times, sine, or sorry, divided by 21 sine equals, okay? If I don't know what this is, the angle, the unknown angle, whatever that is, theta or, or A or B or whatever, whatever you have, figure out what this is. That's going to be a decimal. Put this in your calculator and then hit second function sine or the inverse sine or inverse tan or whatever it is to figure that out. So that's Sokotoa real quick. So this is your quick, quick review of that. Um, the only, so there's a couple other things. We'll do sine law real quick. Sine law is based on this. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. And it's also the reciprocal is true also. So sine A over little A is equal to sine big b over little b is equal to sine c over little c now you're not going to use all this there's two equal signs and that's a little strange we don't really do that much but what we do have here is, is you you go ahead and you figure something out you you figure out what you're looking for and then the equation flows from there so let me let me do this for an example the one we did in class here is i don't know what this is we'll call this uh, b and i don't know what angle b is oh again the big letters are the angles so if i label something like this a b c angle 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 across from big b is little b across from little c big c is little c across from big a is little a so that's that get it okay so that's how we label stuff so big b is here across from it is little b and that's here a is here little a is here c is here little c is here so what are my values i have 105 here uh for big a 
20.5 here, 15.5 here, and the question is, what is big B, or, or uh, there's a little theta here, and find theta. So what you do when you set these up is you write what you're looking for first. And it's going to, you're going to have something over something is equal to something over something. If you write it this way, it's the easiest way to do it, and you won't run into trouble. So I want big B, but if you notice, every time you see a big letter, an angle here, you are going to write sign with it. So you write sign big B, with sign with, with the big B. Now big B is over little b. And then, so that's the pair that you're going to look for. And then you have a pair that you know. So you either, in this case, you have your A's, your sign A and your little a. Now be careful. Sometimes you don't, you, you end up with something like this, where you have 6.1 and then you have, uh, let's say this, 90. And I don't know, not 90, let's say 98 theta and then 5.2 and if you go well you, you i don't have a pair here i don't know a pair here i knew my a's here i'm looking for b's but I, I, and here i don't have a pair well if you don't have a pair oh sorry let's, let's do this a little differently if you don't have a pair you might have one that you don't know about so for example if i have 98 here and i have 63 here and i'm looking for let's say i'm looking for this guy over here uh or or let's make it even easier i have 5.5 here as his length right and I don't have a pair and I want to find X over here. What you do know, though, is that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So what you'll do is you'll take 98, add it to 67 or whatever that is in there and subtract it from 180 to get the third angle. So if you know two angles, you know three angles. And you always, if you have a side, then, you, then you're good to go with, with uh, sine law. So then let's go back to this question. You just sub in and what you're missing is on top here, always, if you set it up properly. Little b is 15.5 from the question. Little a was what 20.5, and then oh, 20.5, and then big A was 105. You move one thing, just move this up here, so that you have sine 105 times 15.5 uh, divided by uh, 20.5 equals a number. It'll be a decimal. Second function, sine it to get your your b. Okay, so that's sine law. Uh, if you're looking for a side, it's even easier. Again, you just set it up the same way. Uh, what you're looking for goes first. So no matter what. Like if I had this one here, let's go back. To, let's actually let's make one up here. Let's say I don't know this. This is 50. This is 60. And this is 3.1. And that's, uh, we'll call this little x. And that's big x. Okay. And we'll call this y and little y. Write down what you want first. So little x goes first over sine big x. Okay. Because little x goes with big x. And the pair that I know are the y's. You're going to set it up so it looks right. Okay. Here I had this, the big the, the big letters on top. Here I have the big letters on the bottom. So this will be sine y, right? So there's a little symmetry kind of. I don't know if it's symmetry, but it looks nice, right? You got your little letters on top, your big letters on the bottom, and then you just plug in, plug in the, the numbers and you move on. Okay, so that's sine law. Cosine law works in two cases. One, when you have uh, two angles and the contained, sorry, one angle, sorry, two sides in the contained angle. So if I, if I have this guy here, this guy here and this angle, I don't have any matching pairs and I can't use the sum of the angle of the triangle to, to figure this out because I'm missing two angles. So here, there's no sine law. Here, I don't have any angles okay, at all. So what, what I, if I have three sides, then I can use cosine law to figure out an angle length. And for both of these, you set them up. Uh, you'll have these written out, but what you do is when you set this up, the general is a squared equals b squared plus c squared equal, or sorry, minus two B, C, cos, A, and that's when you're looking for a side length, okay, small letter. If you're looking for an angle, you start off with cos A is equal to A squared plus B squared, uh, sorry, plus C squared, sorry, minus, no, that's completely wrong. Um, it's, let me do that again, B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2B, C, and if you want to keep track of this, how do you know where, where, which goes where? The B's and C's don't matter, the orders don't matter here, right? But what does matter is that my A, the only other time you see A is the opposite version. So I have the small letter here, I have the big letter here, and it's at, at the end. Here I have the big A, across as far away as possible, I have the little a, okay? So if I have a situation where I'm looking for, I have X, uh, let's, let's use different letters even. Let's use L, M, N, and I'm looking for this angle here, okay? So I'm looking for the angle here, and I have little L is uh, little L, little n, little m, and I know these values, and I want to set this up, and I want to find big L. Again, you write what you want first, and a big letter goes, in this case, not with sine, but with cos, so I have cos L, and then when you figure this whole thing out, m, m and n's, like how do I make this look like this with m and n's? Uh, the only thing that really matters is at the end, I have L's, little l squared, 
Okay, so little l goes away from big L, and then everything else is either m or n, and it doesn't matter what order I put in. That could be m squared, and then that, then at the bottom I have two m n, and then I plus n squared here. Okay, so that's the the way to figure that out. And again, same with this. If I was looking for little m, let's say, right, I start off with m squared because it's it's little m little uh, letter squared, and then the only other time you see the letter m is the capital version at the end. It's a cos, and then it goes l plus n squared squared minus 2ln cos big M. And again, it doesn't matter if L is first or N is, is first. Sub it in, get the answers, and move on from there. The big question here, uh, and, and, and the word problems, I'm not going to make a video for the application questions. It's the same thing, okay? I mean, a triangle is a triangle. The only thing is, if I have a tree like that, I'm probably in trouble if I live anywhere near it or I'm in Chernobyl or something. So here's my tree, and I want to figure out the height of the tree. And then over here, I have, you know, I'm standing here, and this is me, uh, and, and I, I, I'm lying down with this question. And I look up at a certain angle, uh, angle of elevation. And so I know this angle, and then I have this here. And it doesn't really matter. I, I, end up, I end up with a triangle, okay? Here's an angle, and if I know this length here, I have that length, and then I want to find the height of the tree. That's an unknown. So you word problems really the word problems i'm not gonna you know the word problems aren't gonna be crazy i'm not gonna you know a man leaves you know chicago at 4, 42 miles an hour and do south and all that stuff so really simple stuff okay the word problems will be easy the only thing i want to bring up and this is the last thing before the test is what we call the ambiguous case and the case the one we did in class is this i have 11 here i have 10 here and i have a, a and b and c so i have 60 degrees here now, here's the deal. Let's solve this question. And the question is, what is the angle of C? What's big C? Big C, okay? So let's just set this up like we would normally, okay? So there's two answers here. So the first one is, is the standard one. I want big C, so I want big C. I have little c. So big C, I'm going to use sine layer because I have a pair in B and I have, I have a pair that I want in C. So I'm going to go sine big C over little c is equal to sine, make it nice and symmetrical, big B over little b. So when I set that up, I go then sine big C over little c, which is 11, is equal to sine of 60 degrees all over 10. And then what I'm going to do is bring this up here. So I have sine 60 times 11 uh, equals something divided by 10. Find that out, second function sine. And I end up with C is equal to, uh, I believe, 72 degrees. Okay, so that's a, that's your standard question. But the, the issue with this is, if I tell you that this is 11, and this is 60 degrees, and I hopefully I, I did this in class and it made sense and I didn't hurt myself or anything. But what happens is if I have something, and I'm going to do this a little different here. I'm going to draw this guy here. Before I had this guy here, and if that's 10, okay, so I'm just going to extend this line here for a second. This guy here, don't worry about how long it is. If that is the length of 10, what ends up happening is the following. Now, I don't know if it's going to work because it's not really drawn that well. Oops, I don't want to move that. I want to move this. So let's see if I can figure this. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to swing this thing over. So if I have this here, what's going to happen is that's 11. That's 10. Okay, I'm not going to change the length of it. I'm not going to change the length of this. I'm not going to change the length of this. I'm not going to change the size of this angle. But I am going to take this guy here and I'm going to swing it over. And when I swing it over, it's going to dip under this line and then it's going to come back up. And then boom, I have another triangle. So I have the same triangle twice now. And this is called the ambiguous case. I haven't changed this 11. I haven't changed this 10. I haven't changed this 60. But I have two different answers. And the nice thing about this whole thing is you go, wow, that's that's crazy. Or I don't know if you do. But you look at it and you go, neat. And then you, you want to figure out what this is. Well, the nice thing about this is I have sine of something is equal to a number, right? Once I figure this whole thing out, I have sine is equal to a number. And remember, Cass law, Cass law is telling us that I have a sine value, a positive sine value in the first quadrant, but I also have that same sine value in the second quadrant. So if this is 72 degrees, the only thing you do is you find the answer that's in the second quadrant. And to remember how to get to the second quadrant, it's 180 minus theta. So I go 180 minus 72 and bam, I'm done. 108 degrees is this angle right here, this, this other version of C. So I either have 72 or I move over and I bring this in and I have 108. So they're actually supplementary angles. You can look at it that way too, okay? But that, that is called the ambiguous case. And that's the only new thing, and I'm up to 15 minutes. This is the only video I'm going to do for, for the old-style trig questions, I, I believe. Uh, everything else should be straightforward. Okay, so take care. That's it for this unit. So uh, study hard.